All right, so this is a tricky thing right here. So we're bending a piece that has like in combo sections. So everything's gonna move different. We have to heat up everything accordingly. So the bend is mainly gonna be on the fume section or that will be like the, the main part of the bend. So I'm gonna hit that with more heat than anything. And then we're gonna switch between the marver and then puffing and heating. All right, so one more marver, I think I'm good. And it, it's not gonna look perfect right now, but the closer that I can get it to look, the better. Makes my job a lot easier. Having the marver to keep it straight is kind of nice. So the first thing we're gonna do is section off the handle to start the mouthpiece. And obviously, you know, when I'm starting with a piece of tube this big, I have to think about the elements of the project that I wanna come, come into this. So most of the time I will sketch things and I learned from him a really interesting way to sketch things is Draw the thing that you want to make first, and if you don't like that, turn the page and draw it again in a different way, instead of erasing and redrawing. Because if you keep the things you think at the beginning weren't the best thing to do, at the end you may end up coming back to those things that you thought of at the beginning. So don't just erase it, you know, just start over. Sometimes, uh, one of the things I learned in art school when you're sketching a project is to uh, draw a bunch of squares on the paper and sketch the project really small and quickly in each square, changing something each time, just like what Ham does with the piece of paper, so that, you know, you can have a record of the changes that you want to make and you can visualize better what's gonna come next as you're changing things and coming up with a new idea. So first step, I need to tear this bridge off. The purpose of this bridge is just to hold it in place while I made this weld. Now that that's welded in place, I don't need this bridge here anymore. I still keep this anchor up top though because I'm still gonna attach the bridge from the joint onto that. Tear off the excess. Now I'm going to use my jacks, warm them up to get the wax melting on them. So that, um, that like push and pull trick that I was doing by hand is uh, more and more important when you're working with bigger stuff on the lathe because uh, like, like all, you'll see like when we do the decanter, I, I fucked that up before where like it was attached everywhere but not quite there and on the really big stuff it just it gets out of hand really fast and it's easy to miss. So, so I try to like, yeah, push and pull on that and just make sure it's all, it's all good. <clears throat> cool, so we're not gonna fully shape this right now, but I am going to turn that on. Uh, my goal is just to get it kind of shaped out enough to like attach a, um, a bigger handle on that side and then we're gonna switch it, and then we're gonna shape it. Uh, 
Um, I find that the simplest way to do that is just to get everything to the same diameter, to the biggest diameter. But what I'm gonna do is uh, first just back flame this whole thing, make sure it's nice and warm so it doesn't crack again while I'm doing this. I'm gonna open up the top of it. And I put a plug in the bottom so it doesn't shoot flame down the blow tube and make it too hot. I'll open this up and then see if I can see the crack. Yeah, there it is. So I'm just gonna shoot a nice little narrow flame. Uh, I don't know if my hand torch got turned off. No, it didn't, but I don't need that. So I'm just gonna shoot a nice, if you have a hand torch, it's handy, but because you can stick it in there. Oh, okay. Sweet. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so I'm gonna take my hand torch. Uh, yeah, the oxygen is on. Oh, there we go. Aha, okay. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing nice and warm. And I'll just stick my hand torch in here and fix that crack from the inside. If you're really fancy and you have a cold air, compressed air uh, hose, you can just blow compressed air on the outside to cool it down while you heat the inside so you don't melt your lines. But I'm not that fancy. I just, I just fix it, blow on it from the outside. So your lines don't get melted in, they're still sticking up above the surface. The crack is now fixed. And uh, as my Australian family says, Bob's your uncle. Don't know what it means, but uh, that's what they say. Get back to glass now. So I finished adding all the hydrogen. My handle broke, but I just kind of rolled with it. And all that's left is pulling off this handle. Again, if this were to be put into a disc, it would have to be a really large disc, so I'm not putting little pegs on the bottom. Looking like I definitely won't have time at the very end. I was thinking if I finished the rig with extra time, that I might plop this on a little goblet foot. But again, that's the cool thing about these molecules having so many little nodes all, all over them. If I do decide to put it on a foot, I can just plop a handle up here, plop a handle up here, plop a handle up here, do whatever I need to do. So yeah, I mean, if you're having trouble um, getting your wall thicknesses, the easiest way to practice that is to just take a tubing, piece of tubing, and blow a bubble, and then melt that bubble down to a marble, and blow it out again, <laughs> and keep doing it, and you'll see, like, you, you can tell, a good, a good trick that uh, Hick Dog taught me was if you look right on your glass, whatever shop you're in or something, your light, you'll have an outside hue of light and then on the inside you'll have a secondary band of light. And when you rotate your tube, if the line of light stays straight, it means your walls are even. But if it doesn't, it means that they're thicker and thinner because you refract the light differently. So a good tip is just to look at these line, your, the, the light lines on and in your tube to get that extra little like, I wonder how even this is, because it'll, it'll let you know.